This document will provide our experience and best practices when starting the investigation on a ClickView server. Knowing where to navigate within the Management Console will help save time when troubleshooting. Management Console – What to look for when troubleshooting We will share our experiences and best practices when starting the investigation of a ClickView server. The first step for troubleshooting is always to check that all services are up and running. Navigate to the services and notice all four service names have green icons and the status is running. To identify if a service is not running, a red with X icon will show next to the service name and a disconnect status. A message box will also provide additional information. From version 11, you'll get an alert in QMC if one or more services are not running. The About file is a good start to gather general system information like the ClickView server version, available CPU, and system memory. One point to check is that the available memory on the server is not low, for example, less than 10% from physical memory. Also, if you have at least one service on a separate server, for example, all four services are running on separate servers, you can view all services from the same About tab. Just scroll down further in the About tab to view all services. We will now start with the settings for each ClickView server. Mostly only one entry will be there. And we will point to the key areas you should check. In the General tab, if facing problems with communication between the services, it could be useful to set the URL to qvp slash slash localhost and the link machine name or IP address. The Folder tab, check the location of the root folder and possible mounted folders. These will be visible in the access point. For mounted folders, the flag Browsable must be checked. Locations of mounted folders should not be below the root folder or the other way around. This can cause problems. For example, same application showing twice in the access point. To fix it, change folder paths. The Document tab. Depending on the actual problem you are troubleshooting, you can check several things on this tab. The setting, allow only one copy of document memory can lead to increased memory usage depending on the reload or document settings of the application. You will also find several collaboration settings here. Be aware that these are general server settings and you may have to adjust the details of the specific document. For example, if you allow session collaboration, the next step is to activate session collaboration for each document. The Performance tab. First step here is to check the current settings for the CPU and the working set. It is recommended to let at least one checkbox unmarked under CPU Affinity for the system to ensure access to Windows and the Management Console. The working set should be in most cases set to default values, 70 for low and 90 for high. If not, ask why is it set off of the default values. If you troubleshoot the system without a publisher, you can check the max concurrent reloads. Maximum should be one reload per CPU core. Be aware that the default settings in Windows, the limitation is currently 10 concurrent tasks. If more is needed, you'll have to adjust the desktop heap. Sessions is the last topic, as this can be helpful when dealing with session timeouts. Default these settings to 1800 seconds, also known as 30 minutes. In most cases, you will adjust the maximum inactive session time and possible session time. Reason could be to allow a longer inactive time. If customer is using session cals, he might be interested in an earlier timeout to release the session cals sooner. Logging tab. Very important when troubleshooting are the log files generated by ClickView. We recommend activating the session, performance, and event logging. In most cases, a medium event log verbosity is enough and high is just needed for deep analysis issues. To prevent log files becoming too big when opening, we recommend to split files to daily or weekly. The Security tab. If you're facing problems with authentication at the client side, a good way is to allow temporary anonymous access. The second point is to check which authorization is used on the system. 
If NTFS is chosen, you have to take a look at the file rights. In DMS mode, you will have to check the file rights in the user document properties through the management console. The alert tab. This tab is only needed when you troubleshoot problems with alert mails. The login tab. In most cases, the server login should be empty. This setting is only needed for services running on a different server without domain users. In this case, you fill out the credentials of the local user from the other system. As a reminder, when you run into issues with the management console or you are suspecting odd behavior, a great way to troubleshoot these issues is to first become familiar and comfortable with the console navigation. Knowing where to navigate within the management console and the relationship for each setting, it will help you save time when troubleshooting. A few additional tools and resources are Click View Help menu. Also, you can view the Release Notes, Reference Manual, Article Knowledge Base, and Click Community.